Life is a series of choices. The more you know, the better you choose. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And we're going to continue today uh, with, from, based on a, uh, my inspiration from an article by Thomas Opung, tremendous article, 103 Life Lessons People Often Learn Too Late. These will help you make better choices. So here are some of today's gems. First of all, don't invest in a career, build a life. Take your dreams seriously. You know, a lot of times people, they go to school, they get, you know, the, the status quo is, you know, get your education, learn a particular field, get a job, and then you're done. You're not done. Life continues on and on and on and on. It's essential that the work that you do, which is where you spend the majority of your time, you spend eight hours sleeping, you spend eight hours at work, and then the other eight hours are available to you. I mean, where are you spending most of your time? At work. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is you want to keep yourself excited. You want to keep yourself motivated. Build a life for yourself. Use your career to help you accomplish your dreams. Does that make some sense to everybody? You know, don't just, you know, be the bun man at McDonald's, you know, is that the title that you want? You want to have like your picture in the yearbook and says, here's Eli's dad, he's the bun man, all right? Is that, is that your dream? Figure out your dream, build your life, take your dreams seriously. Everything is on you. No one's coming to save you, you're in charge. Embrace that mindset and you can change your life. Too many people wake up every morning, look around, and let the outside circumstances control their life. You know, one of the things that's absolutely critical is that you have uh, an inward revolution right here in this six inches between your ears, and that will change what you become. Think about what you want to become. That is the key element. And if you let outside circumstances control you, does that make sense? I mean, you need to figure out what you want and then find the circumstances that fit your needs and pursue them vigorously. Too many people live the passive lifestyle and they complain about this, they complain about that, well this is in the way, that's a problem, he doesn't like me, you know, my, my teacher hates me. You are the one that's in control. You must embrace the mindset that you are the only one that can change your life. No one's going to be throwing you the life jacket and say, hey, here you go, you got a great life, I've given it to you. Think about that. If you commit to nothing, you'll be distracted by everything. We've talked about this all the time. It's like, you know, if, if, if you're a, a ship without a rudder and you have no destination, how do you know when you get there? And the other thing is, people just flip from circumstance to circumstance to circumstance you know, they play this video game and they watch this TV show. And I'm not saying in moderation, you know, that those things are bad. But what I'm saying is when those things control your life, you're not living a life of proactivity. You're living a life of reaction. That's not the way life was meant to be. You are meant to go out there and be proactive and pursue the dream you were put on this earth to accomplish something, 
to contribute something. What is it you're accomplishing? What is it you're contributing? Advancing to the next level in the video game is not really something that you want to put on your headstone when you die. Have an accomplishment that is worthy of a headstone. Have an accomplishment where you're contributing. Give something back. And when you do, that is when you will feel the most fulfilled in life. So if you commit to nothing, you get distracted by every little thing out there. Progress is the ultimate motivation. We've talked about this before. This is so critical that you ha when you have a dream, when you have a goal and ambition, it must be measurable. The reason it must be measurable is because motivation wanes. You don't wake up every morning and say, all right, that's not the way life is. One of the things you want to do, as I preach from this pulpit so many times, give yourself that quiet thinking time, envision your dream, put yourself there, see that it's already accomplished, and that gets you some motivation. But the thing that keeps you going on and on and on, that gives you the persistence, that gives you the ability to achieve great things, is as you make progress, it is a new inspiration for you to move on. So, you know, we, we've spoken about making progress, you know, when I see somebody that's like, as an example, a, a bad foul shooter, and I spend time with this kid, you know, at the foul line in practice, and say, okay, let's get your form right, let's get your form right, let's get your form right, all right? And then all of a sudden he goes from being hitting three out of 10 to hitting four or five or six out of 10, that's progress, and that kid feels like I have accomplished something, what more can I do? That's critical for you as a leader also, is to make sure that you're measuring the, pro the progress of your people in terms of achieving the, the, the dream that you're trying to accomplish, because when they accomplish something, they're saying, okay, I've done this, wow, didn't know we could do that, maybe we can do more, let's do more, let's do more. And it, it allows people to have their grasp be longer than their reach. Once you commit to getting started, momentum will carry you. That is so important. We've talked about procrastination and we go over this all the time. Why? Because procrastination is one of the biggest detriments to a person reaching the success that they desire and they deserve. And the key thing to overcoming procrastination is to get your body in motion. Once you get your body in motion, the law of inertia, cap the law of inertia will carry you. Body in motion will stay in motion. So you get yourself in motion. You get to the starting line. And then ultimately, you'll run into a roadblock. What do you do? You create a new starting line. The formula is very, very simple. But you must commit to getting started. And it starts with having the vision. It starts with identifying the starting line for today. And it requires that you measure your progress, that you see how far you've gone. And once you get to that roadblock, somehow, some way, a new starting line will appear. Where do I go from here? Well, you don't know that before you take the action. You take the action, you run into the roadblock, you review your results, and then you say, what do I have to do next to take the next step? and you get to a brand new starting line. Life is a series of continuous starting lines. Think of how far you've come so far. Don't get on that treadmill where you get satisfied and you say, okay, I've done everything I'm gonna do. Even people that are in retirement have to have that attitude, what more can I do? What contribution can I make? What's my new starting line? What's going to give me the juice to enjoy 
this period of time that I have on this planet so that I can be fulfilled and I can make a contribution to mankind. In the end, we only regret the chances that we didn't take. You know, one of the things that you hear all the time is that people that are in hospice or people that are in retirement homes or so on, and they get asked the question frequently, so tell me, what's the number, you've, you've lived a long life, what's the number one regret that you have right now? If you could change things, if you could turn back the hands of time, what would you change? Invariably, invariably, they always say the same thing. I would have taken the chance to do this. Instead, I was fearful that I might fail, so I didn't take the chance. And if you don't, you know, take the shot, you're not going to score the basket. You've got to take the shot. Don't be somebody that ends up with major regrets of all the woulda, coulda, shoulda, things that they could have done but didn't do because they were so fearful that they might not make it. Remember, failure is feedback. It's nothing more than that. It's just the infinite mind telling you, the infinite mind wants to work with us. The infinite mind gives us feedback. And that feedback is saying, hey, I want to help, but you're not going in the right direction here. You're going to need to change what you want to do get yourself a new starting line, look at it from a different angle, get a different paradigm. But it's essential that you take some chances in life. And you're aware of the chances that you're taking, but you've got to take them. The people that are the greatest achievers are the ones that put it out there. Once again, huge shout out to Thomas Opung for his great article, 103 Life Lessons People Often Learn Too Late in Life. And because we're never going to end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's get out there and take charge. I'm Eli's dad.